Sci-Fi Combat Boots Made in Blender Ready for any game engine or 3D software In this video I'll break down how I made them From a blocky mess to this clean game ready sci-fi boot using basic sculpting, pre-topo and procedural materials No fancy baking, no high poly drama Let's get into it So I didn't go into full Pinterest board mode on this one but I did look at some combat boots and futuristic sci-fi concept boots just to get the vibe. I knew I wanted something chunky with solid padding and a little bit of futuristic attitude. The kind of boots you'd use to kick down an airlock door. I started with the base mesh of my character and separated the foot. I added a cube to block out the major forms, toe, sole, ankle, height and the whole silhouette. I also brought in a reference image of the side view of boots. I didn't worry about clean topology at this stage, just threw something around until it looked like something a space marine would wear on a casual Friday. Two simple extrusions to block out the main silhouette and then started adding loop cuts to block out the other details. And after that I ended up with this blocky mess. I moved and positioned it over the foot model. In edit mode, I started selecting vertices and scaled them down with proportional editing to better follow the shape and the contours of the foot. Instead of manually retopologizing everything before moving on, you can choose some of the free open source auto remesure, J remesh, or the other add ons like quad remesure, etc., to retopo your models before you move on to add more details. You can also use the inbuilt remesh modifier that is there in Blender. Change the settings in smooth, sharp or voxel mode which also gives us decent looking retopo meshes to work with. After blocking out the basic shoe shape, I wanted to model out the sole but with a separate object. So I added a plane and shaped it roughly into the sole of a shoe. Added more details using loop cuts and scaling vertices up and down. You should also move into the side view and align the vertices along the side profile of your shoe so that the sole follows it. When I had a mesh that I was satisfied with, I extruded it to form the basic sole shape, loop cuts, extrusions and bevels to smooth it out. I remeshed it at this point to have a better topology, but there were some jagged edges so you can go into sculpt mode and use a smooth brush to smoothen out any jagged edges. After looking at some references for soles of action shoes, I brought in an image that I liked into Blender and went into Sculpt mode. Press R to open the grid and scroll to set it to a value that is suitable for sculpting. Press Ctrl R to remesh it. Now you get a dense mesh ready for sculpting. Press M to choose the mask brush and start masking out the sole shape according to your reference image. It can be a time taking process and it helps if you have a graphic tablet. But I thought it would be easier than modeling this from scratch or using booleans to make the shape. The mask looked good from a distance but it was time to go in and clean it up. Reduce the brush size by pressing F and moving the mouse to make detailed intricate masks. Or hold down control while moving the mask brush to erase the mask. Once you are happy with it you can go into the mask menu to sharpen, smoothen, shrink or grow the mask. You can even invert it if you like. There are a lot of options available in the mask menu, so I suggest you explore them on your own. You can click on mask extract to extract the mask parts of your mesh into a new mesh. You can go into edit mode to edit it. Whenever you extract something from a mask, it comes with the solidify modifier already on it. So you can just go into the modifiers panel and change the thickness in the negative value to extract the mask outwards. Negative because we want it to extract downwards, positive would extract it upwards from the base of the sole. If you have jagged edges, you can either smooth it out in the sculpt menu or add a smooth modifier with a high repeat value. Once I was happy with the basic shape of the shoe, I chose the shoe base mesh, went into sculpt mode, pressed R and set it to around 0.1 and pressed Ctrl R to remesh it. Because now it was time to use the mask brush to sculpt some armored panels onto our base shoe mesh. Press M to get to the mask brush again and enable the X mirror so that you can sculpt easily on one side while duplicating it on the other. I started sculpting some panel lines. 
the design is yours so that's ultimately up to you. Choose a good reference and the rest is up to your imagination. You can use control with the mask brush to clean out any uneven parts and then go to mask menu, extract it with mask extract and then increase the thickness with the solidify modifier. If you still see some jagged edges, you can go into the sculpt mode and use a smooth brush to smooth out the uneven edges. I masked a lot of different panels, taking my time and inspiration from reference and also how I wanted the boots to look with the rest of my character. The mask brush is a really amazing tool and it helps a lot while trying to sculpt something organic looking. Once I was happy with the armor plates, I extracted them and added a smooth modifier on top of it. Thickness on the solidify modifier. At this point I realized there was no hole on the top for the foot to go in, so I made that. And then added some curves to make straps to go around the boot. You can add some bezier curves and edit them in edit mode. Increase the bevel and the extrude to give your straps some thickness. Now I was happy with the straps around the boots, but it was time to model some buckles to fasten them. Used a simple cube and a reference image of a plastic buckle to model a low poly buckle for the shoe. Place them alongside the straps and move the straps in edit mode to better integrate with the buckle. Now it was time for the most exciting part, adding materials. For this, I want to give a huge shout out to Sanctus Material Library. It's a huge collection of procedural materials, geometry notes generators, custom assets, decal tools, and best of all, there's a baking tool included that you can use to bake your textures out into any software to use. There are various paid plans available, but you can go with the light version, which gives you 67 materials, 15 generators, and so on to try with. It's a really amazing plugin and definitely show Sanctus 3D some love. You get a whole lot of materials, assets, geometry nodes, generators, decals, etc. to start with. I quickly added some materials from the Sanctus library. I didn't need to tweak them much, just the colors at most. And within minutes, I had something that looked quite good. After adding the materials, I added a mirror modifier on the shoes and it was time to bake the materials for use in other softwares. For this you can just come into the shader tab and press N to open the side panel. Scroll down to Sanctus, set the texture size to whatever you want to bake at. Choose the material that you want to bake and make sure the same object is chosen in the outliner as well. Right click on the material and add bake maps from node. Choose color, metallic, roughness, etc. whatever you want and just click on bake. In a few seconds, you'll have your materials baked down below and you can click on the red save icon and choose your location to save out your materials to use in later projects. I baked out the materials one by one for each of the six different objects I had in my shoe mesh and just fired up Unreal Engine, bring the mesh in and test out the baked materials. This is not a video about Unreal Engine. I'm still learning it, but I'll definitely plan a video in the future telling you all about how to work in Unreal Engine fired up a new project and brought in the shoe mesh, set up the materials one by one according to the maps baked from Sanctus library. And after adding the materials one by one, I think we had a pretty good recreation of the material nodes from Blender right here in Unreal Engine. There were some errors, but I rebaked and got rid of them. If you quickly want to make game ready assets that will look good in any software and you don't have to spend hours texturing, try out this workflow. These are the second pair of boots I made in Blender, done and dusted, learned a ton, had a blast and I'm kind of proud of how they turned out. If you found this breakdown useful or just wanna see more Blender builds, hit that like button or subscribe if you're into this kind of thing.